Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Gran Turismo 7 Daily Race C Race and Strategy Guide. For this week's race we are heading to Sardinia Road Track and it is the A variant in reverse and we're going to be racing around that track for 10 laps in the Group 4 machinery. Tyre wear is at times 5, fuel is at times 2, it's just the racing hard tyres available. There's no mandatory rules that I am aware of at the point of making this video. BOP is on the mid-speed, BOP is damage light. Formation start and slipstream is real. Yeah, not the most inspiring sentence to be fair. I do remember doing this exact combination in Gran Turismo Sport, but it has been a while and the Group 4 cars are actually good fun to drive around this very, very nice uh, fictional track in the game. So moving on to some live action here. The test car for this one is going to be the Alfa Romeo 155. Tends to be pretty much dominating any daily race when it comes to Group 4. Kind of surprised me that it was uh, as dominant as what it has been at uh, Suzuka this week, uh, given it's a power track, and I don't think this car is particularly great in a straight line. But I did think it would be quite strong around here because the, the strength of this car is the acceleration in third and fourth gear, and there is about four parts of this track, I think, where that kind of potent acceleration is going to come into play. So that's the reason for choosing this car, and I think it's probably going to be the car this week, as you will see shortly in the video when we test it against some other cars. Now, ignore the lap times here, they're certainly not the most consistent run that I've ever done. I was actually listening to the Formula One whilst uh, doing this test run. Had a few excursions with the wall, but I did enough laps in it and enough fast laps in it to know that this car is going to be pretty strong around this combination and get into the reasons for that as we move on through the video. In terms of strategy though, I'm sure you could work it out from the settings earlier on in the video. It's a no strategy, no stopper this one. You will get a little bit of mild tyre degradation towards the end. I never really suffered from the tyre wear because we never really kind of went beyond that sort of 50% tyre wear mark you know, over the course of the run. But if you are particularly hard on the tyres, I think you might find your kind of lap times dropping off just slightly towards the end. So being able to save tyres, there's a possibility of it being a little bit of an advantage in this one. But it shouldn't really present too much of a problem for the vast majority of drivers out there. You can see the tyre wear indicator in the bottom left hand corner, certainly nothing to worry about. Finishing time, 18 minutes, 34.5. Sort of pretty much standard fare, daily C uh, race length time, that I would say. So moving on to the sort of Alfa Romeo's biggest competition, or the car that certainly was dominating Group 4 for a period of time, and that is the Nissan GTR, also a four-wheel drive car. And I actually initially did the test in this one, but yeah, I wasn't quite happy with the performance of the car, and it kind of came pretty clear to me when I kind of took a look at a couple of the stats. I was really surprised by how much worse the tyre wear was in the GTR, and it turns out it's actually 300 kilograms heavier than the Alfa Romeo 4, uh, 4C uh, 155, and honestly that results in the GTR having around about 25% worse tyre wear, and it definitely takes the GTR into that kind of tyre wear bracket where you will start to feel a bit of degradation. So. Not only is the GTR slower than the Alpha 155, it also has considerably worse tyre wear. Now the next car we jumped in here was the Jaguar F-Type, just to see how an FR car was going to fare around this track. In terms of lap times, a good bit slower than the 155, but certainly potential there. You know, that 150.9 is not a million miles off what we were doing in the 155, and the optimal, a 150.7, just a few tenths slower than the optimal of a 150.4 in the Alpha. Tire wear issues, not really existent in the FR cars here. They tend to wear the tires eh, a little bit more even. But in terms of finishing time, we were four seconds slower than the Alpha Romeo 155. Quite a lot when races can tend to be quite tight. Now, that's pretty much it for the story of the strategy. There is none, but a tired egg towards the end. I think the story of this race, though, is going to be all about this perilous turn one and the new damage model that's in the game, or the new damage sensitivity that's in the game. Now, turn one here at Sardinia Road Track A is fairly infamous. It's a very, very fast left-hander. And it's not so much the corner that's a problem, but it's this kind of barrier that juts out. It's almost like a funnel if you get it a little bit wrong. If you try to go side by side with another car around the outside here, 
and we all know that people love to give you lots of space around the outside. This barrier, the way it juts out, you make the slightest little bit of contact, you're in that barrier and you are having a big old accident as we shall ably demonstrate here in the GTR. Now we don't get it particularly wrong, just a little bit wrong, it's just a little bit of a scuff. We go round, we hit the other barrier on the inside, a bit of a spin, a broken engine, a barrier penalty to boot as well and yeah you're going to see quite a few people in that bad. And another big thing to consider on this one is after update 1.20, where they updated the sort of uh, sensitivity of the damage, is that all these little minor taps on walls that used to be able to get away with around this track, and bear in mind that it is a track that is very much closed in with barriers for a good portion of it. Just a couple of little taps here. You can see we barely scuffed that wall there, but that was enough to break the suspension on the previous one. We broke the, the front wing as well. So I think... This is going to be the story of this race because these barriers are very close to the edge of the track. They're quite easy to kind of just accidentally scuff as you come round some of the corners. For example, this one here, just turn in a little bit early, catch the nose on the inside. Anytime you're going side by side with someone, we all, as we said earlier in the video, we all know how people love to give space. And you're going to be carrying that damage for around about 30 seconds before it fixes itself. And that's going to cost you a half second, maybe even a second, depending on how severe that damage is. So, I think, rather than in kind of, obviously there's no strategy, as we've kind of discussed. A little bit of tyre dig towards the end if you're really bad on tyres, but the story of this one for me is going to be that turn one. It's going to be the closest of the barriers to uh, a lot of the track, and it's going to be this new sensitivity on the damage model. It's going to see people picking up a lot of damage, a lot more often than they're used to. They're not going to get away with these little scuffs on the wall anymore it's going to cost you lap time and yeah if you can keep the car out the wall which is you know not an unusual thing to say let's be honest keep the car out the wall you should do okay in a, a racing game you know that seems like common sense but yeah far too often in Gran Turismo we've been able to get away with these little wall scuffs and little bumps into the wall and little minor accidents where we kind of make small mistakes and a track like this with the barriers where they are we're definitely going to be feeling those little scuffs a little bit more. Definitely something to consider if you ask me. But yeah, that's pretty much this one in a nutshell. Personally, I quite like the combination, to be fair. I do like the track. I like Group 4. Of course, I'd like to see a little bit of strategy. I do wonder how this race would have played out with the old tyre model. Uh, I do think that tyre wear would have been a bit more of a factor under the old sort of uh, tyre wear model. But yeah... I'm still trying to get my, my head around this new one. I'm not entirely sure it is favourable to strategy, but it remains to be seen. It's still early days, so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves in that regard. Let's finish the video off though with a lap guide. Jaguar F-Type Group 4 coming into turn number one here. You're looking for the kerb on the left-hand side. Sorry, the right-hand side uh, is your uh, marker for that. Now, as you come up to turn two here, there is a hole in the wall. You can't quite see it. I've actually Pause the footage just a little bit too late, but it's around about 125 metres, there's a hole on the wall on the right hand side that serves a very good braking marker for turn 1. Now I forgot to save the footage on the Alpha 155, which is why I'm doing the lap guide in the Jaguar F-Type. Get up to turn 3, it's a very fast right hander. It's one of these corners that the earlier you turn in, but get it right, the more you will be rewarded because it just means you don't have to slow down quite as much. It opens the corner up, but it's an easy corner kind of turn in just a little bit too late and then of yeah, under steering like mad. And yeah, of course for all these corners, as I said earlier, look at all the barriers around us. These are all easy to pick up damage if you get them a little bit wrong. I use the triangular sign for this corner here. Now you have to trail break into the left-hand part of this corner, get the car over to the left-hand side of the track. You will feel the rear end of the car squirm out awkward corner this is off camber easy to get on the throttle too early in something like a Jaguar and spin up the rears it shouldn't be too much of a problem in a four wheel drive car which I do believe will be the cars of choice this week but yeah if you're using something like the Jaguar or maybe an MR car definitely a trickier corner or an easier corner to get wrong using the triangular sign you can't see it because of the pillar on the left hand side of the car here for this pretty fast right hander need to get the car right into the apex here now I use that tree that you can see just to the kind of left hand side of the screen once I can see that tree I'm pretty confident I can get on the power and uh, not understeer wide into the barrier but yeah understeering wide into barriers are certainly going to be something you don't want to do this week due to that damage 
And then coming up to this interesting little uh, left right, around about 75 to 80 metres. Sacrifice your speed for the first part of this to get the car over to the left hand side of the track and that means you should be able to go through this corner here full throttle. We didn't quite get it right, it uh, carried a little bit too much speed into the left hander. And coming into this last sequence of corners, I used the start of the kerb on the left hand side there. It's very similar to the corner previously where you've got a trail brake, get the car nice and straight, you'll feel the back end squirm and then get the car into the camber there to help it round. The annoying penalty they used to pick up in GT Sport if you ran wide on the last corner I think is gone. I certainly never picked up in the course of doing 3-4 test runs around this track. But that's a, a lap guide of Sardinia Road Track A in reverse in the Jagger F-Type Group 4. Hopefully that's been useful to you in some way, shape or form. Hopefully the video as a whole has been useful to you in some way, shape or form. If it has, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. We'll be live streaming this one over the course of the week as we always try to do. We'll try and use some different cars like we normally do as well. Should be a fun one, maybe a frustrating one to be fair with the barriers and the damage and no strategy and being forced to try and do overtakes and nobody giving you space etc. But yeah, we always tend to have good fun when we live stream, we always tend to have some pretty good racing. So do join me for them if you can. I look forward to your company. Thank you very much for watching and I shall catch you on the next one. Goodbye now.